So, I'm a never have been a big Glock fan. They're great guns. I know the police, military use them. Uh, everybody loves them. They've got a huge following. But the grip was always too large for me. I couldn't reach the magazine release really well. I had to adjust a little bit. Well, of course, they changed that on the Gen 4s, Gen 5s. They got the very large magazine release on the thing here. This is the Gen 5, the Glock 17. This is the MOS version. Now, the reason I ordered this is a guy had a Gen 5 17, and let me check it out. You can see the gun's clear. We safety check it here. He let me check it out, and I, I never was a fan of their triggers, but this thing has a really nice trigger on it. It's got a great trigger reset. When you pull it, it just breaks really, really crisp. I do like the uh, serrations on the front of this one here. You can use that to uh, to check, make sure you got your round in there. I like that. I also like to charge mine up from the front also. But it's got ambidextrous slide release on this firearm. And it has your standard Glock sights on it. But what I really liked about it was it came with the slide cut. So it's already cut out back here so that you can install an optic on it. I do like that they got away from the uh, finger grooves on here. With my hand, the uh, finger grooves they had, it just didn't quite feel right when I was hanging on to it and grabbing it. So I saw this one. I saw I could put optics on it. I really like the trigger. And so this is actually my first Glock. And it came in, so it came with three magazines. Really nice magazines. These come with the orange followers on them. I did order an extra one. So this is a Gen 2 Glock. I wanted to make sure that the magazines would fit. The Glock 17 magazines for the Gen 2s, uh, they pop right in there. I also ordered me a 30 round magazine, Gen 2, and it goes right in, locks up real well. We'll test fire it at the range to make sure it functions, but the gun came with, of course, the firearm, three magazines, you have a loader. You got a bunch of back straps here also. So you got, obviously, would be the small, just straight from the factory. But then you've got a, whoops, you got a medium, medium back strap you can add. You've got a large. And then you've got a medium and a large here, just a standard. This gives you a little, uh, little coverage there on the rear. I guess to prevent slide, slide bite. These are pretty easy to install. Pop the little pin out here. I just snap it on there so you can see how it fits and looks. So, so there it is on the gun. So this is the medium size on there. So if you needed that little bit of extra, wanted it on there. It, it does feel good on there. It keeps your hand from going up. Probably going to keep you from getting slide bite back there if you got a little bit of meat on your hand that's going to stick up. But it just uh, makes the gun a little bit too big. I'm back to the issue of being able to reach the magazine release based on my hand size only. But if you put one of these things on, I'm going to take it off. Of course, I didn't put the pin in it. It's still hard to get out, but right next to the pin, there's a little opening, a little tiny screwdriver. I just insert it, barely turn it. It'll pop right off. So, uh... Don't, don't damage your gun trying to dig that out of there. Just pop it right off. Comes off really easy. You also get a set of four plates. Okay, these are to mount your optic on here with. This is uh, adapter set one. So adapter set one comes with it. After I ordered the gun and was looking, there's an adapter set two. I had difficulty finding what optics fit this gun and mount on it. Uh, which one of these plates go with them. And so what I did is I'm just going to go with what I got. I'm going to cut this thing open and we're going to see which one of these plates is going to work. I also want to know how difficult it was going to be to actually change this thing out. So I've got over here and this one's clear. So this is uh, the Walter PPQ, the Match 5, and I have got underneath here. So I've got the Vortex Viper on here. So I'm just going to pop this off and see if I can get one of these plates that will fit onto this, um, to this Glock. 
see how difficult it is to change it out. So I hadn't really seen any videos on it, anybody install them, swapping these things. So let's uh, let's just pop this off of here real quick. And let's pop this out. And let's see if we can match this thing up or how difficult this is going to be to actually do that. The other issue that I had was there are no instructions. I mean, there's a really nice instruction book here with Glock. I didn't realize you could order your gun, the little compartment up in here. You can order it with a lock where you'd insert something and turn it and you can lock your trigger so the gun won't fire you have to factory order it that way there's a couple other little things you can get on your gun there's a curved um, magazine release that you can order for it but it has to be a little work done to the gun doesn't work on the gen 5s and i think on the gen 4s but they're for left-handed folks so let's see if we can um let's just pop it off of here first because we're gonna have to we're gonna have to take the the RMR off of here, and we're going to have to see. Let me get my bag here. Once we get the RMR off of here, we're going to have to see if it'll match a plate over here. So this is my, my Walter bag. Walter sent me a little bag. It's uh, labeled with their stuff on it. So I keep the extra screws. I keep the iron sights in here that drops back on there. I keep the little, um, little Allen wrenches that work with it right here wait a minute let me, let me drag this one out so to make sure that i could keep all this stuff together that glock sent me got me a ziploc bag i wrote on it what it was the glock 17 gen 5 the mos adapter set one i also put a piece of paper in there and wrote that on in case this gets smeared off always label everything as you begin to take screws out and pull things apart have a place that you can put them uh, have a small little magnetic tin that you can keep stuff in as you work here that makes it a whole lot easier on you in the future when you go back to mess with this stuff so let's see hang on let me put some glasses on here so i can see Okay, so we got our Viper here, got it off, set that over to the side. Let's just go ahead and put these back in here with my little Walter kit so I don't mix that up. And so first thing we got to do then is start picking out these plates and just grab one of them here. And let's pull them out and see. So if it sits like that, we're going to have to match it up with the holes on it. Nope, not gonna fit Bartok. Bartok, calm down. Now I'll just let you outside. And looks like we actually have a match. It is plate plate number zero one. So uh, adapter set number one, plate number zero one in it. Looks like it looks like it's going to fit really good. Nice fit to it there. Just to just to check, let's just set it on top of the other ones just to be sure. Not going to fit that one. Not going to fit that one either. But yeah, the way that's designed is definitely not going to work. So plate number one. So if you have a Viper Vortex uh, order set, MOS adapter set zero one and plate number one is the one that fits it so now we've got our plate and our optic let's see if we can pull this off of here so they give us a little allen wrench here All right, so let's check our plate. Plate drops right in, and 
we are not going to use those screws to hold that plate on. Those screws look awfully long for that. So let's let's back up and grab these little screws that came with this thing. They sent four. Four screws. They look like they're all the same height here when I'm comparing them. They've actually already got a little bit of Loctite on them, blue Loctite on the screws. So we'll just drop them in there. And we're going to take it easy here. We're going to gently screw these things in. We don't want to just go hammering down on these really tight. Make sure it just snugs up and we don't start hitting anything inside of there as we go down. So nice and easy, we just tighten up one side and jump back to the other side. I just want to keep tightening them both up a little bit. When you got Loctite on there, it just sort of makes the screws a little bit harder to put in as you go. But there we go. I felt the bottom on that one. And on this side. So I felt the bottom on the screw there. So both of them are all the way down. I didn't feel like it was pushing on anything. It's on there good and snug. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to tighten it down. I'm going to tighten one side a little bit. So I'm going to get a lot of pressure. I'm going to strip these. A little pressure on this side and make sure we got good pressure there. All right. A little bit more here. A little bit more there. All right. They're good and firm. So let's put, before I make a mistake, let's go ahead and put the tool that came with the Glock in here. Let's go ahead and put the Glock cover plate and the two screws in our Ziploc bag. And then let's go ahead and put our other plates for our Glock in our Ziploc bag. Everything's already labeled. I labeled it before I did this. And our last two screws, we're going to pop them out of here. And we're going to drop these down in there also. So now we got two extra screws. The screws for this, we're going to zip that thing shut. We won't need that. And, and let's get the two long screws that we're holding that plate in. Now, let's try one more time. So we got our Viper. We set our Viper on there. They can only go one way, as we said. So let's drop these back in here. Uh, these are pretty tall screws. Also, I'm not so sure these things are going to crank down and hold it. I could be wrong, but let's see. They're, they're going in. And they are. So the screws that actually mounted the, um, that mounted the original that mounts your original plate up here. The two screws you take off to take it out, those are the screws that actually go into the top of your Viper to hold your Viper down. So I just snugged them down. Now I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on one side. Go back to the other, a little bit of pressure on the other side. I'm jumping back and forth. Just a tiny bit of pressure. I keep snugging them down slow a little bit each time so that I'm putting just a little pressure on each side of this optic. I don't ever just screw one side down all the way. I know you had to jump back and forth for a minute. But we don't want to crack that optic. I know you're supposed to have a uh, tool that tells you how much pressure to put on it to hold it down. But I, uh, I haven't ever got one of those. I just nice and tight. I don't put too much pressure. But it just it snugs in until it doesn't really move anymore. And there we go. So, let's turn the optic on, see where it's at. There we go. So, we got our optic on. What do you think? The Vortex on there. The Viper Vortex. I like this Viper Vortex optic. 
I've enjoyed shooting with it. I really love how this gun feels. I love this trigger. My little nephew's got one. And I'm not sure if he's got the Gen 3, Gen 4. He might even have the Gen 2. But I just did not like the trigger in his. But this thing is just so crisp. I mean, the reset, it's really got some pushback on it on the reset. You can feel it come back into place. You can hear it click, feel it snap in the spot. And when you just pull... You put some pressure on it, it just breaks so smooth. It, it truly does. Glock did a great job on this trigger. Straight from the factory. Uh, I'm not going to mess with it. I'm not going to do anything with it. And this thing is supposed to have a match grade barrel in it. I like those front serrations in it also. I do like this gun. I do like the mag release. I like the way these magazines are jumping out of here. When you hit that mag release, they're just popping right out. So, well, that wasn't that bad. It really wasn't to put it on. So when you take your cover plate off, save the two screws, and your Viper Optic will go on the number one that uh, drops in there, and you'll just use those same two screws to screw it down. So let's head out to the range and let's go shoot this thing. Something that I didn't notice when I put this on here. Uh, on my PPQ, the rear sights actually come off when you take the optic plate off there and put the optic plate on. On the Glock, the rear sights stay on. So on this Viper Vortex, there are two screws in the back right here. One screw locks down the up and down adjustment on it. One screw over here locks down the right and left adjustment on the thing. So you've got to be able to reach these to unlock them to adjust it. So I'm going to have to take the rear sights off this gun in order to be able to access it. Doesn't really matter to me about taking the rear sights off. You can't co-witness with those rear sights anyway. They're not tall enough, so you won't be able to see through them. I don't plan on shooting it without the optic anyway, so I think I'm going to leave the optic on here. So I'm just going to go ahead and push that rear sight right out of there real quick. All right, I just got back from the range from shooting this Glock. This clear, let me drop the slide so you can get a look at what it looks like. This, uh, it has got a really nice trigger, really nice reset. Like I say, my first Glock, and I gotta admit, I really like this gun. I like the feel of it. I like the uh, trigger pull. I like the follow through, the recovery on the firearm. And you can see I removed the uh, rear sights and the rear sights pushed out really easy. I just dropped it in the vise here and Took a uh, punch and just gently tapped it and it come right out. It was really simple to do I, I couldn't you know, I couldn't loosen these up and adjust it with that in the way But like I say, I'm not going to fire the gun without the optic. I'm gonna leave this optic on here so I have to admit, um, I'm a fan of this gun. I really like this gun a lot, and I'm going to start shooting this one in IDPA, see how, see how it goes. So if you're looking at the new Glock 17 Gen 5 the MOS, uh, it's a great, great gun. And also, you know, I had some of the Gen 2 magazines, 17 round magazines. So I put them in there. They fit fine. And they slide locked fine, no problem. The 30 round magazine, I shot some through it, goes in good. Slide locked open, no problem. Uh, do like do like these. These were the one the new magazines that come with these orange followers. Uh, just seemed like it was pretty easy to load. I didn't have any trouble loading this thing at all. Uh, all the magazines run well. I didn't have any stoppage malfunctions. Like Glock says, they don't do anything to their guns. They come right out of the box. I just run something through the board to make sure the, the barrel was clean and went and shot it because they're all ready to go from the factory. They tell you not to clean them, just to shoot them. 
and uh, it run great, function great. I, I really like it. I going back tonight to shoot it at IDPA practice. So um, if you're looking at one, go out and uh, go out and purchase one. Rent one to shoot it if you can find one to rent and shoot. And if you're on the fence about it. I'd go ahead and buy one. I really like this thing. I think this may be one of my new favorite firearms. <laughs> so remember, everybody, be a responsible adult. Don't push your responsibility off on a child. Buy a gun lock, gun safe. Find a way to secure your firearm to prevent accidents with children, okay? Don't push your responsibility off on a child. Why, what